Mitt Romney is often credited with saving the Olympic movement. It was only five months after 9-11, and the nation was in a state of mourning. The 2002 Winter Games had taken on great significance. Today, the Salt Lake Games are remembered as one of the most successful Olympics ever. But there was a time when they were in trouble. An international scandal was exposed in 1998 after word leaked that Salt Lake officials were lavishing members of the International Olympic Committee with gifts to win the bid for the 2002 Games. The governor of Utah turned to Mitt Romney for help. These games will be held at the highest level of ethical conduct. Fraser Bullock, Romney's right-hand man in Salt Lake, recalls the state of affairs when Romney stepped in. It was really dark in those days. I mean, it was a budget deficit. The Justice Department was in the same building down the hall investigating the organizing committee to see if they would indict the organizing committee. And Mitt appropriately characterized it as stepping into an empty elevator shaft. In his job as a, a venture capitalist, that's what they do, is they take risks uh, by distressed companies and figure out a way to make them successful. Romney left his job at Bain Capital in Massachusetts and moved into his vacation home in Utah, and he got to work. He began restoring the organizing committee's morale, traveling the country to raise $300 million in badly needed sponsorships, and shoring up the confidence of sponsors like NBC. He even encouraged volunteers in Utah to speak an official language of the Olympics in this training video. Bonjour, je m'appelle Miss Romney. Et je suis président du comité d'organisation des Jeux Olympiques d'hiver. Romney went on to write a book about the experience. He called it Turnaround. But not everyone agrees with his version of the events. David Ewer is a retired Utah legislator, now back on his dairy farm, who worked closely with Romney on the Olympics. For the person who stood back, the average citizen in the state of Utah, that the only thing they knew were, was the, the 10 or 12 days of the Olympics themselves, yeah, Mitt's probably a hero because they don't know the inside story. Ken Bullock served on the organizing committee and considered himself a watchdog over the state's investment in the Olympics. He often clashed with Romney and remains one of his leading critics particularly of his book. Turnaround of what? I mean, those are nice cliches when you're running for something that you get to claim victory for, but I mean, our mountains were here. The reasons why we hosted, we were awarded the bid to host the games were here before he came, they're here after the games. The real credit goes to the community of Salt Lake City, Salt Lake County, and the state of Utah. However, there's one point on which everyone seems to agree. Romney truly shined in his public role during the Olympics. He was a prince of public relations, doing stunts for the press corps, releasing a series of Romney fan pins, and orchestrating the high drama of the opening and closing ceremonies. Mitt is very flashy. He is extremely capable on his feet. He was trying to get a positive image for the games and that was positive. I, you know, the fact that he would inject himself into it, I think that's part of the casualties of certain personalities where they want to be more of the, the show than the event itself. <laughs> you have to be a showman. He was brought in to be a showman. So a lot of the chairmen and our CEOs of the past have turned into a very high profile national and world leaders. That was not lost on Mitt Romney. Behind the scenes, Romney was known for his effective leadership, but some recall that he could be less than gracious, for better or for worse. Mitt could be mean. He could be bloody mean, excuse the term. With Mitt, you have to be prepared. You cannot wing it. You have to have the data because he will challenge you, appropriately so. He will question your assumptions. He will question the validity of the data. And then he always looks at what can go wrong. Good arguments and good battles are important in board of directors, both of the Olympics or companies or whatever it might be. But I do know that Mitt does have a, has the ability to stand up and get right down ugly. And get ugly he did. People still talk about the day when Romney was headed to a men's downhill event on a heavily congested mountain road. The roads are small in a mountain hamlet, and yet there were hundreds and thousands of cars uh, heading there. I'm responsible, I'm guilty, because, you know, that operation was my responsibility. And it was snowing very, very badly. And so I'm in the stadium. Mitt calls me and said, there's a traffic jam here. 
uh, the buses aren't moving. One of the traffic controllers, Mitt didn't think was really doing his job. And so Mitt bails out of the car. And said to a, a political police officer with authority, move over. You know, obviously you're not uh, doing this right and I'm going to take over here. Now, just what kind of moral authority he had to do that, I, I'm not sure. I don't believe it's appropriate. Mitt might have said something inappropriate, but he didn't say what was claimed to have been said. Now, I never heard Mitt swear. Now, maybe, maybe other people did. I didn't. Does it, is he capable of doing it? He wears pants, doesn't he? This community is a little sensitive to swear words. I don't know that you can go up to an, a police officer and, and kindly say, move over. <laughs> In the end, we got the buses moving. People got into the stadium, they got to see the event. And it was written up nationally, internationally, that little small incident. But it does point out uh, uh, Mitt's personality. Maybe he sought too much glory. Maybe he stepped on toes and got downright ugly. Maybe he savored the limelight too heartily. But all told, most agreed he got the job done. Olympians and people of Salt Lake City, we did it! The Olympics more or less went off without a hitch, ending with a hundred million dollar surplus and catapulting Romney into a national celebrity. He returned home to Massachusetts triumphant and immediately launched what would become his first successful political campaign.